A Vita Stone Bridge strain gauge instrumentation amplifier is discussed and explained in this video. At the core of this circuit, we have a Vita Stone Bridge that uses a combination of reference resistors R and a reference voltage VREF to figure out the stretch or strain in a strain gauge and then use a differential amplifier based on dual op amp design to report the amount of a strain as a voltage at the output. So that's the big picture of how the circuit works. But let's talk about the details of it and then find out the output voltage formula as a function of the circuit parameters, including the alpha, which is this uh, strain coefficient and also the reference voltage and other resistors in the circuit. Okay, so let's uh, first talk about uh, the core of the circuit. The strained gauge as one of the resistors, so as you can see, the Wittestone bridge is in this format. We have voltage reference VREF on top, like 5 volt, 10 volt. We have a ground connected at the bottom of the bridge. And then we have three reference resistors that I suggest them to be very low tolerance, like less than 1% or even better. And then we have, instead of the fourth resistor, we are connecting the VREF to one uh, let's say metal pad of the strain gauge and then we are connecting the other resistor to the next metal pad of the strain gauge. Basically the strain gauge is functioning as a fourth resistor in this circuit with a value 1 plus alpha times R. When there is no strain, so it's not a stretched, it's in nominal position. By stretch I mean we are not a stretching these uh, metal wires, then the alpha value is zero. So that's the nominal value. So nominal value of resistor is basically just R, similar to the other ones. When we are in compressed, let's say, strain mode, like this one, basically the length, the length of these wires will reduce because we are compressing, as you can see here. When that happens, the overall path for the current is reduced because the length of wires reduce and alpha is a negative number. In the stretch mode, it's the other way. V length is increasing because we are stretching uh, the two sides of these metal wires and therefore the overall resistance for the strain gauge is increasing, which means alpha should increase. So alpha is a positive number in the case of the stretch mode. Okay, or uh, basically when we have uh, the strained, uh, let's say strain gauge. Now, the question is, can we find the formula at the output of the circuit that reports this alpha? Uh, basically, we understand how, whether it's a compressed or stretched and how much. Okay, so between VREF and ground, via the resistors R, we have a simple voltage division. Obviously, because R and R equal, we expect that the value of voltage V1 at the positive terminal of, say, op amp 1 should be just equal to 0.5 VREF, or basically VREF divided by 2. Okay, so that's voltage V1. Now, uh, for the same reason, we can do a voltage division between uh, the VREF and uh, the ground based on 1 plus alpha times R and R. So to do that, I'm going to just write that simple voltage division. So it's going to be, let's name the voltage, voltage V2 at this node, which exactly means voltage V2 at positive input terminal of op amp 2 as well. So let's write that. For V2, I have just as simple as Uh, a voltage division, so R, divided by series of R and 1 plus alpha R. So R divided by R plus 1 plus alpha R times, of course, VREF. We are doing a voltage division. So VREF divide, that's it, VREF. Okay, so uh, obviously we can uh, just remove R from the numerator denominator, so it becomes 1 over 2 plus alpha times VREF. And uh, this can be further simplified by writing just 1 over 1 plus alpha divided by 2 times VREF divided by 2. 
and uh, it's very reasonable to make the assumption that parameter alpha or the coefficient of a strain or a strain coefficient is much less than one so therefore uh, we can say therefore we can say v2 is with a good approximation v2 is equal to just instead of writing 1 over 1 plus alpha over 2 1 minus alpha over 2 times v ref divide by 2 okay so let's refer to this as equation let's say if this is equation 1 equation 2 I'm going to form delta V or the delta voltage between the V2 at positive terminal of op amp 2 and V1 at positive terminal of op amp 1. So I'm going to define V2 minus V1. So substituting using equations 1 and 2, I'm going to get, so equations 1 and 2 for V1 and V2, I'm going to get 1 minus alpha divided by 2 times V ref divided by 2 minus V ref divide by 2, which is the substitution for V1. Okay, so I'm going to keep it. There you go, just so that it's clearly visible. Uh, now, the nice thing is, as you can see, it gets further simplified, and we get to a point that delta V, as defined V2 minus V1, is just simply uh, the value of minus alpha divide by 4, and then we have voltage reference so let's keep that as basically this says as alpha is increasing which is the scenario when we are stretching then the delta v uh, then the voltage v2 decreases and as a result delta v is a negative number by this definition so let's keep that now uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what's the rest of the circuit doing. So the combination of these two op amps with the resistors R1 and R2 actually form a dual op amp differential amplifier. So we have a dual op amp difference or differential amplifier. So differential amplifier in the circuit. So what is the a benefit of dual up and differential amplifier with well, the good thing is because the inputs coming from the let's say the nodes of the Wittestone bridge are connected directly to positive input terminal of the op amps because uh, for a good well-designed op amp uh, practical op amp we can assume that the input impedance is nearly infinite and therefore the input current is nearly negligible so zero microamp or very small on the order of nanoamp so the current will be very small, zero microamp. Now we need to also make sure that the op amps are properly biased. So the supply voltages for op amps, both op amp applied. And also we have negative feedback for both op amp output connected to negative terminal for both op amp. Therefore, both of them are operating in linear region. So op amps enforced by negative feedback operate in linear region. And as a result, we can say virtual short is valid for both op amp, which means voltage at positive terminal of each op amp equal to voltage at negative terminal. So uh, for op amps, which means, which means as a result, I can say, I, I can say if V1 at positive terminal, then V1 is at this node as well. And if V2 at positive terminal for op amp 2, then V2 is at this node as well. So let's focus on uh, quickly op amp 1, which basically is just a non-inverting amplifier. For the op amp 1, what we have is this scenario. We have just a simple uh, ideal op amp, and voltage V1 is at positive terminal. At negative terminal, we have a resistor, as you can see, resistor R2 connected to ground and resistor R1 connected to the output of op amp. So we have as simple as R2 ground, and then we have R1 output. This is non-inverting, so this is V out one, output of op amp one. This is non-inverting amplifier. And it's well known for non-inverting amplifier. It's so super easy to compute because obviously the current going this way is voltage across R2, which is simply V1 divided by R2. So this current is V1 divided by R2. 
and uh, that should be the same current that is coming from R1 because nothing can go through or come out of the input of op amp so therefore it just the uh, voltage scale up between R1 and R2 and therefore what we know for the non-inverting amplifier output is simply 1 plus R1 divided by R2 scale up so R1 divided by R2 times V1 all right so keep that in mind because I'm going to reuse it now let's go to op amp 2 what do we have for what do we have for op amp 2 here for op amp 2 we have two inputs v2 applied at positive terminal so situation from v2 to v out is very similar to what we just uh, did for op amp 1 basically from perspective of v2 we have a non-inverting amplifier to go to output so the gain is governed by that but we also have v out 1 here so at the output of op amp 1 we have v out 1 and uh, therefore for the scenario for the second op amp looks like this we have op amp 2 and then we have at positive terminal we have v2 negative terminal we have a resistor which is r1 we have another resistor that is feedback resistor which is r2 connected to the output so now we have final v out and then we have at the input of resistor r1 we have v out one so therefore imagine we have two independent inputs one is v out one the other one is v2 we can use superposition so to solve this problem we're going to use uh, superposition and uh, the superposition basically is simple operation uh, once assume v out one is there uh, only v out one is there and compute the impact to v out once assume v2 is there and compute the impact to v out so and then sum them up so v out is equal to if v out one is not there we are grounding this node and from v2 to v out is exactly like what we did for the first op amp so we can say v out is equal to exactly same thing uh, one plus r2 divided by r1 times v2 okay so that's the contribution of v2 to v out now let's uh, again using superposition let's make the assumption that now v2 is not there so ground it so make uh, just ground the v2 basically we're gonna assume it's not there and then we have v out one active so from perspective of v out one to the output we just have an inverting amplifier so this was the impact of a non-inverting amplifier for the v for the v out one we have an inverting amplifier to output which is simply minus r2 over r1 times v out so minus r2 over r1 times v out one that is inverting amplifier okay so what is the last step well everything is here okay except we need to substitute for v out one from ver from equation three using equation three so let's do so uh, so i am going to refer to this as equation four and i am going to apply uh, the so using four and three basically i'm substituting uh, v out one using three in equation four i get v out is equal to one plus r2 over r1 and then v2 keep it minus r2 over r1 times one plus r1 over r2 times v1 there you go so if i simplify this whole thing that we got here if i simplify this whole thing what i get at the end would be this interesting outcome one plus r2 over r1 then we have times v2 minus v1 which is exactly what we expected for the properly designed differential amplifier based on the two op amps i just showed you so then how's the operation of the circuit well i'm going to substitute for delta v using say equation uh, let's say uh, 
here the star equation so using star equation this equation and I'm going to substitute for delta v which is minus alpha over 4 times v ref so I get v out is equal to minus alpha over 4 and then 1 plus r2 over r1 times v ref All right, so that is that is the final outcome that we wanted to prove in terms of what is the voltage of this uh, strain gauge uh, bridge amplifier or bridge a strain gauge amplifier or instrumentation amplifier as a function of the components in the circuit which uh, we just found. Basically, what matters for the computation is the, what is the value of reference voltage, what is the value of R2 and R1 as the amplification factor, what is the strain coefficients of the strain gauge alpha as I described here so uh, in summary we found let, let me see if you can see it yeah in summary we found that assuming the bridge is properly designed in terms of the very low tolerance resistors and assuming that proper op amp selected again as I said preferred low very low input offset current then and very low noise uh, up amps then we should have a very accurate uh, very accurate bitstone bridge based strain gauge instrumentation amplifier i hope this example is helpful in terms of showing how a combination of a differential amplifier and uh, a bitstone bridge can serve well uh, as a strain gauge uh, bridge amplifier thanks for watching